Everybody, good evening. Go with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. That's the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And your Bible, my Bible, our Bible, the Holy Word of God reads, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all the authority in heaven and on earth. Verse 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And verse 20 rounds out and it says, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Come on, family, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we're thankful and grateful that you come today, dear Lord, giving us this opportunity to be better together by studying to show ourselves approved, needing not to be ashamed, because, dear Lord, you said in your word, a workman that divides the, truth, the word of truth, dear, dear God, needs not to be ashamed. And so we're thankful and grateful on today that you've given us the opportunity to come together in the middle of the week, that we would gain some momentum going into our weekend worship service. Open our hearts, our minds, and our ears so we can hear what it is that you're saying tonight about being a dedicated disciple. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, family, we're picking back up with our real relationship series here tonight, and we're going to keep going. We started off with Membership Matters on Sunday, and I hope that some of you guys were there for it. I thought it was a great service. I had a great time, and I, got, I even got a word out of it for myself, and I thank God for it. But tonight, we're going to continue on because we just can't stay in the same ship. Sometimes when we come into Christianity, the illustration I like to talk about as we're talking about our, our real relationships is that we also have to upgrade our ship. Anybody like to be upgraded, right? Nobody likes to stay in a dinghy all their life. One day we want to be able to graduate to the to the big fleet boat or the yacht as it would be, all right? Or the battleship. We don't want to stay in the fishing dinghy. So God says, listen, I will upgrade you. I'll continue to grow you according to my purpose, my will, my glory for your life. But you got to be willing to do it. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to put in the work so God can see that our heart is with him and he can grow us to that next ship. Amen. So that ship on tonight is going to be uh, being a dedicated disciple, a dedicated disciple. So let's go back. Uh, let's go into it tonight. So our opening text. This is widely known as the Great Commission. You guys have heard me say this text a couple different times over and over, and I love it because Jesus, this is before he was getting ready to transport, transport and transition on out up to the right hand of the Father in heaven. He gave them the Great Commission. This is what I want you guys to go out and do. You apostles or you disciples now turned apostles, I want you to go out and go make, baptize, and teach. I want you to transition from being disciples to now disciple makers. I hope you guys got that. I want you to transition from being my disciples to now going and make more disciples like I made you. And so that's what our opening text is talking on about tonight, being devoted to Jesus Christ, learning what he teaches through his word, because that's how we get to know more about Jesus. That's how we get to become a better disciple. And I'm going to cover that tonight. Really, that comes by two ways. Let me cover it right now. You learn it by his word, but guess what? Jesus taught those disciples, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all the rest of those brothers back then. But crossing the bridge from there and then to here and now, you need somebody who can help you to understand what's inside these pages. So it's very important that you get somebody who can help you become the disciple that you desire to be. Amen. So it goes on. After all of this, this is uh, our main objective that Christians should be looking for to do. This is why Christ saved us in the first place, that we would become disciples of his, right? And so we talked about membership, but now we're going into discipleship. Discipleship is simply this, beloved, being a devoted follower of Jesus Christ. That's what being a disciple is, being a devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Being a workman that needs not to be ashamed, like I said in my opening prayer, of the gospel by studying the word daily to show yourself approved. That's what a, a true discipleship, a relationship with your mentor, your model, your motivator, your discipleship looks like unto Christ, right? So let's get into our first point tonight. Our first point is discipleship is an interpersonal and contact sport. Discipleship is an interpersonal and contact sport. Let me bring some clarity to that. Discipleship being an interpersonal um, thing is because you have to make a personal and transparent uh, uh, attempt or an effort to be able to draw people. Jesus said, he says, listen, if I be lifted up, which we know that was the case, he was lifted up on top of that cross. He was um, crucified for our sake and for our sins. And he died for that cause. Right. And he said, if I be lifted up, he knew what he was saying when he was saying it. If I be lifted up, then I'll be able to draw all men to thee. Now, 
Jesus got lifted, but Jesus gets lifted in our heart on a weekly basis. This is what the transition of that scripture means. So as we lift Christ in our life, that draws men to our life. That's the key thing. So it has to be interpersonal. You can't draw somebody to your life. Christ was very personal. Jesus was very personal in nature. And guess what? He also said in, in the Bible, he said, listen, you want to be found, you want to have friends, you got to be found friendly. He, that's what Solomon wrote. And we got to be able to do that in order to be able to draw men and women unto us so that we can be disciple makers and try to better and enrich their lives with the word of God. Right? We got to be able to be transparent parent with others and to be effective, dedicated disciple and dis, uh, disciple makers. To be a dedicated disciple and disciple maker ourselves. So it also is a contact sport. Say contact. Contact. It's a contact sport because the more people you touch, the better disciple you are. Right? That's where you kind of enact your evangelistic gift at home, everybody, right? Becoming an evangelistic gift. Making sure that you're getting out there, beating the streets, talking to people in the marketplaces, at the gas station, in your office place work, inviting them out to church. Ignite that and fan the flames of fire of that evangelical gift and, and tell people about the Christ, the, the Lord and Savior that you serve. That's another part of being a dedicated disciple on tonight. Let's go to number two. Number two, tonight's study says a dedicated disciple is always fulfilling the roles of a mentor, a model, or motivator. A dedicated disciple is always fulfilling the roles of a mentor, a model, or a motivator. Each of us, and I've said this to the men, and I also said it to the ladies, I've said it in Sonship, I've said it in church, and I'll say it again here tonight on Momentum, that each of us should have a Paul, which means that we should have a, 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 a mentor that's pouring into our lives. Each of us should also have a model or somebody that we sharpen iron with. So each of us as men, we should have a Barnabas. And then lastly, we should always uh, complete this circuit of, of the triune or these three. We should have somebody that we're pouring into. That's right. You can do all of these simultaneously because Jesus did these things simultaneously. He was receiving from the Father. He was teaching the disciples. He was a brother with Lazarus, remember how he felt about his friend Lazarus? So he had somebody who was sharpening iron with, but then he was also pouring in to everybody from children to grown ups and so on and so forth. And in like fashion, we need to have a Paul, we need to have a Barnabas, and we need to have a Timothy. But check this out, ladies, I didn't forget about you. XO helped me out and, and naming some names of the women of the Bible, because you gotta have a mentor, a model, and a motivated person too that you can pour into, that you can sharpen iron with, and that you can receive from. So she said, the, the women's version of this is Naomi. Naomi was the mother-in-law to Ruth who led her back to Christ or led her to understand Christ and she married Bo Boaz ultimately, right? And then you need a Lydia, somebody who is motivated, somebody who's supporting the gospel, somebody who's not leading you away from Christ, but leading you to Christ. That was Lydia out of the book of Acts. And then lastly, you need a Ruth. You need somebody just like Naomi poured into Ruth. You need a Ruth in your life. Even though you may feel like you're just getting started, ladies at home, and you think, okay, I can't really, I don't have anything to speak into somebody's life. Don't think low, light, or little of your gift. You've got something to speak into a young lady's life because you've experienced something. That goes for all of us. That's being a transparent, dedicated disciple. So make up your mind tonight. Do you want to be that for God? Because God desires that for you. Amen? So each of us should have a Paul, Barnabas, a Timothy, a Naomi, Lydia, or a Ruth. So let's define this thing. Let's make sure that I, I don't leave you guys without defining it tonight. So what's dedicated? Because I said a dedicated disciple. Dedicated by definition is to be devoted to a task or purpose, having single-minded loyalty or integrity. To be devoted to a task or purpose, having single-minded loyalty or integrity. In other words, this means you are committed, you're staunch, you're steadfast, you're immovable, unshakable, resolute, unwavering, faithful, and true. That's what that means. And what I'm saying tonight is you don't have to be a dedicated disciple unto your, uh, to your mentor. You got to be a dedicated disciple unto Christ. That's what he desires for you to be. Matter of fact, let me roll that one back. I do want to say that. You want to be dedicated first to Christ and then to your mentor. You know why? Because your mentor didn't have to pour that life and that time into your life, right? We want to make sure that we're respecting that mentor's time, whether it be man or be woman, whether it be somebody that's five years older than you or 50 years older than you. That person took time out of their life to deposit into yours. So make sure that you're um, that you're being steadfast, unmovable, unshakable, always abounding, and showing the good fruit that you're growing out of your life because these people, to include Jesus, is giving their time unto you that your life will be enriched and better. Amen? All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's talk about what a disciple is. So we covered the dedicated. Let's talk about what a disciple is. Disciple is empowering others and training the believer through the word of God in order to win others to Christ, 
be a follower or student of the teacher, which is Jesus Christ, and to discipline others to become leaders, Christ-like leaders. So again, that's empowering others and training the believer through the word of God. That's what the disciple is. It sounds like the Great Commission. Now, that's what we opened up with tonight, right? That's what it sounds like. Go make, baptize, and teach. Let's go on to number three, family. We only got nine points tonight, so we're almost there, right? It goes on to number three, and it says, Your attitude as the disciple says, Never be satisfied, always be hungry. Never satisfied, always hungry. A true disciple is never satisfied and always hungry for the word of God. Always looking for the opportunity to eat, eat, eat. That's right. You want to make sure that every single time that you sit down before um, that Bible in your own personal devotion, you, you are ready. You're bellowing, bellowing up to the table with your fork and your knife and your napkin tucked in. And you're saying, God, feed me. I'm ready because I'm no longer a child who's on the sincere milk of the word, but I graduated and I need that meat to sustain me. That's what that means. You're showing that you're growing up before you go up and God is pleased with that, amen? And so you wanna make sure that you're always ready to eat, eat, eat and get something out of it. We gotta be, there, there's a saying in the world family that we don't eat to live, uh, we don't live to eat, but we eat to live, which means that you have to be able to not uh, be a glutton as it would be, okay? God's not asking you to, to stay all day in the word, but he says, my word is so very important. It's nutrient for your life. You need it. And so we got to eat. You wouldn't dare go a day. Well, some of us do, but you wouldn't, most of us wouldn't go a day without eating all day long, right? And because your body's going to tell you it's time to eat. Guess what? Sometimes your spiritual man or woman is telling you it's time to eat. And what that means is get to the table. If you ever find yourself in a spiritual dry place, you find yourself easily frustrated, your flesh is responding or reacting to things very intensely like it hasn't hit. What happens is you found yourself in a spiritually dry place and you probably haven't been eating the word like you should be, beloved. And that's what happens. If you're a dedicated disciple and you fall back, you'll immediately be able to tell that you're out of place, that you're out of pocket, that you're out of position. And God says, get back there. And the way to do it is through my word. Amen. All right. So let's keep going. Proverbs 4 and 7 says this, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. This is what Solomon was talking about. He was talking about knowledge, but not our head knowledge, not your or my version of knowledge, right? Because Jesus said, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And what he was saying, listen, your mind ain't like my mind. So you can't think your thoughts and think it's going to be equal to mine, right? No, Solomon was describing here in Proverbs 4 and 7, God's kind of knowledge. And the only way to get God's knowledge is from this book. It's from this book. And if you don't know how to rightly divide this book and be able to get the truth out of it for yourself, make sure that you're submitting and committing yourself to somebody who can help you to understand this. When I did that and I submitted and committed myself to my teachers in my life, these last 10 years have been the most enriched and the most better life, uh, better years of my life that I can ever think back on in the 40 years that I've been walking the face of the planet. Why? Because I have this living word on the inside of me. I submitted and committed myself to somebody who taught me more of it. And now I have the, uh, the privilege and the honor of teaching others the word. This is what God desires for each and every one of us. Amen. So let's give you another definition on tonight. It's knowledge. Say knowledge. That's right. Knowledge. Knowledge meaning being made aware through observation being made aware of something through observation, or you inquire to gain the knowledge or information, right? So be made aware through observation, inquiry, or information, having developed a relationship with someone th uh, through meeting and spending time with them to become familiar or friendly. You guys know um, <laughs> the Bible doesn't say um coming together romantically it just displays it and the way it displays it it says to come to know somebody that's what it is you to become intimate with the person that you say that you know as a dedicated disciple if you're in a relationship with somebody again we're talking about a real relationship and you're spending that kind of time sharpening iron building each other's ex, uh, intellect matter of fact the way the word says it says it's edifying one another building each other up that's an intimate thing to do with one another beloved and you got to be able to know something about somebody who in the right mind spends some time with somebody and don't know nothing about them you can't say i know jesus and you don't know nothing about them 
You can't say that you know the person that sh that's your brother or sister on the road to your left or right in church. And we're all in the fellowship. And I love seeing Susie. And I love seeing Patty. And I love seeing James. And I love seeing this one. But you don't know their favorite color. You don't know their birth date. You don't even know their kids' names. When they come around, they greet you in church. The reality is this. You got to know somebody in order to show yourself to be dedicated. Amen? You got to be dedicated. Let's say dedicated. That's right. Dedicated. Number four tonight. Number four says, you can't say... You know someone again and someone uh, you know something or someone and not spend time with them You cannot say that you know something or someone and not spend time with them Jesus uh, wants us to as his as his saved and sanctified holy and set apart people to be so much in his word People of God that we become the word That's how intimate that's how much of a knowing he wants us to have that we're in his word so much that we become the living word as a matter of fact talking about the living word he wants us to read the living word so much that we live the word that's the whole point because how many of us can tell out there in, in tv land or out there in facebook land tonight tells me that you read one scripture last year right let's say it's uh proverbs 4 and 7 but this year a whole year later you finally pick up the bible you read proverbs 4 and 7 again it means a totally different thing you're in a totally different season you're a whole year older a little bit wiser maybe been through some things maybe not but the fact of the matter is this you now know that this word shapes itself around your life which makes it a living organism and god says if you read the living word then you can become the, uh, the the dedicated disciple that lives the word and that's our desire is to be the living word as christians here on earth let's go to number five number five is this tonight is the word in you flat out that's a question i know it's not usually a question that we give i give a statement all right but i'm asking you tonight number five is the word in you there's a couple different ways that we can know Number one, can you finish what the preacher is saying when you know he's going to say it? When he puts the text up on the screen, do you know where he's going with it? Are you thinking of a scripture as he's making a point in church? And you're like, well, Jesus said this. Or when I was studying the other day, it sounds like that. That's how you know the word's in you. Another way that you know the word is in you is that you don't easily become restless or uh, discombobulated or upset so easily because the word's on the inside of you. Paul said, be angry and sin not. Now, that's a dynamic that a lot of us can't figure out, but that's the word of God. And if we can reflect on that word, beloved, as a dedicated disciple, it keeps us from stumbling, fumbling, and dropping the ball as a Christian. So we got to, guys asking tonight, do you have the word on the inside of you? Do you have the word like Daniel had the word? Daniel from the book of Daniel, who knew the word and it kept him while he was in exile in Babylon. And even as he watched his friends, the three Hebrew homeboys get thrown into the fiery furnace. Do you know the word like Timothy? Timothy was a young man, kind of like myself, who started a ministry and was placed in the ministry by his father in the faith, Paul. And he was ready in season and out of season when he was ready as a young pastor. Or do you know the word even like Jesus. Now, we ain't going to get the word like Jesus, right? He was the only perfect sinless lamb that have ever walked the face of the planet. But it doesn't mean that we can't pursue passionately after trying to achieve the level of perfection that he had in the Father. Remember what he said in Matthew 5. He says, listen, my Father in heaven is perfect. You should be perfect too. Meaning that we should be maturing and trying to get as much word as we can on the inside of here and on the inside of here before we go up to see the Lord. Amen? Because that's the word that's going to keep us on tonight. I got a very long acronym for you you guys know i'm in the military and i love acronyms because it puts handles on stuff to make sure that we can carry this thing let me give you the acronym that god gave me for disciple a couple years back when i was on the back side of the desert on my last tour he said disciple means this d-i-s-c-i-p-l-e it means disciplined in studying and sharing christ influencing people's lives eternally disciplined in studying and sharing christ influencing people's lives eternally that's what being a disciple means god essentially is telling us that's what it means to be a disciplined disciple matter of fact let me give you this other definition tonight discipline discipline means training it means a, bl a branch of knowledge it means typically one studying a higher education I like that part, right? Higher education. We may not be going to college. We may not be going to a doctorate. But guess what? God's word is on high. It comes from heaven. That's the higher education that this definition is talking about. At least that's my revelation on tonight, right? It also says a learner who submits to discipline or one who becomes a disciplined learner. God wants his disciplined disciples to be learned people of the word on tonight, right? 
So let's also talk about influencing because I mentioned influencing within that acronym, influencing people's lives eternally. That's what a disciplined disciple does. That's the number one reason why the unchurched and the de church out there outside the doors of the church say that they don't want to come back, beloved, is because nobody is willing to disciple them. <sighs> That blows my mind that there's not a man or a woman inside the doors of a church house that's willing to reach out and grab the hand of a young person trying to learn about Jesus and willing to do the work and walk it out with them. You got to be willing to do the work. So let's talk about influencing and we're going to get ready to get out of here. It says the capacity or power of a person to be compelling and forced to produce effects on the actions, behaviors and opinions of others. That's what the that's what influencing is, right? To be able to influence the actions, behaviors, and opinions of others. As Christians, let's do better at being 100% dedicated to the lifestyle of being a disciple. We got to be able to influence, influence in a positive, impactful way, not in a negative way. Amen. So let's go on number six tonight. Number six says this: If we get more knowledge of God's word, it helps us to act. You see, act is the base root of the word action. See, it help you to act like a Christian if you get more knowledge of God's word on the inside of you. And then it'll help you to take action as a Christian and tell more people about Jesus Christ. And then check this out. Act, again, is at the base root of a word called acknowledge. It'll help you to keep acknowledging that Christ is the head of your life at all times, keeping you from stumbling and fumbling back into the snare of the enemy and back into sin. That's what God is trying to get you to tell, do it on tonight. He's trying to get you to act Take some action and to acknowledge him as Lord in your life. Turn to your neighbor right now where you're sitting at and say, I'm a dedicated disciple. That's right. So, hey, family, be in all in or all out. That's what God is asking on tonight. Be all in or all out. We already know he's not a midline kind of guy. He wants you to either be hot or be cold. And a lot of times, remember, we think cold is negative. Jesus didn't say that. Just be one or the other, but don't be in the middle. How can a person be betwixt between two opinions? How long is that going to happen? How can a house that's divided stand? How can two walk together unless they agree? The Bible says that over and over again, you can't be straddling the fence. You got to go get off the pot. You got to make sure, beloved, that you're making your, making a decision. We came from a long series, about eight weeks talking about decisions. Make a decision. Let's go to number seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, be relentless in how you pursue after Christ. Be relentless. And how you pursue after Christ. Don't let anything, don't let no no thing, no man, no woman come between you and your pursuit of knowing Jesus Christ better. True disciples are also the one who says to themselves, I'm too appointed, working on being better than I was yesterday. That's the confession of a true disciple. That I am too appointed. We're never busy. We're appointed. We're too appointed on working on being better than I was yesterday. Come on, beloved, pick that pick that declaration up tonight and use that right i also like to say this um number eight this is where i have to I, i've said this to some high school students and i picked this up along the way and i also quote this to myself um number eight is you have to be willing to sacrifice who you are today for who you will become tomorrow in jesus you have to be willing to sacrifice beloved who you are today for who you will become tomorrow in jesus but are you willing to sacrifice that person are you willing to give yourself away so Christ can make you a better person, a better man, a better woman, a better father, a better mother, a better auntie, a better uncle, a better person at work in your community, a better preacher, a better pastor, a better minister? Are you willing to sacrifice who you are today so you can be somebody better, a dedicated disciple even of Christ tomorrow? Amen. Let's get ready to get out of here and I'm going to give you guys number nine and the takeaways tonight. Number nine and the takeaways that I really want you to be able to put handles on and put in your pockets and take out of here with you is this. Number nine is this. To really be a disciple of Christ, we must, we must, we must have desire. That's the first D. We got five of them. You have to have desire, which is to have a, will, a desire and a willingness to suffer persecutions and even ridicules as you lay down your life for Christ as he did for you. We have to have determination. So we gotta have the desire and determination. Be willing to be weaned from the worldly things and people. You gotta be willing to be weaned from the worldly things and from the people that's in it. No matter who it separates me from, beloved, or identifies me with, make sure that you always choose to go with God. 
So after we have desire and after we have determination, now we have to have devotion, a dedicated, devoted disciple. That's what we're talking about on tonight. Being willing to be faithful to his word and bear good fruit in your life because of that word that you receive. That's what you got to be devoted. You got to be devoted unto Christ. And then next, we got to be dedicated. Dedication. Say dedication. That's right. So we have to be, have determination, devotion, dedication. We have to have a desire. But dedication on tonight means to be teachable and to be a person whose life is characterized by love. That's being dedicated. I'm dedicated to my wife because I love her and my life is characterized by that love. I'm dedicated to my career as a soldier and my life is, 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 is showing that I'm dedicated to my country through that love of my career. I'm dedicated to my children and I show it in a way that I'm dedicated to them by making sure I provide their father and I coach, teach, and mentor them and on and on and on. So you got to make sure that you have that level of dedication being shown in your life, beloved, as a devoted, dedicated discipline. Our last point on tonight is destiny, family. So you have to have desire in order to be a dedicated disciple. You got to have determination. You got to have devotion. And most importantly, you got to be dedicated, family. And most importantly, or lastly, all of these will lead to your destiny. And that's a great choice. It's a great choice to be a dedicated disciple, pursuing after Jesus, knowing more about him through his word, but most importantly, committing and submitting yourself to a place where you can learn more of him. Again, I say it often. And I can't say it enough, wherever you're potted and wherever God's got you placed is where you're going to prosper in your life. And we prosper by the enrichment and the edification of the word that God speaks into our lives. There's only one word that we need, family, that will set us free. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we're thankful and grateful, dear Lord, that you've shown us tonight that you desire a more intimate relationship about knowing who you are through your word. So give us a spirit. Give us a, a, a zeal that we would pursue after you through your word, learning more. Also committing and submitting ourselves to a leadership in a local church, dear God, that we can learn through the word that's being taught there for our lives, oh Father. And it's through your word that we get free. It's through your word that we have liberty. It's through your word that we have increase in our life as well as prosperity. So we thank you now for your word because it is the life-changing thing that, that saved us. And so we're thankful and grateful, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So check this out, family. Please make sure that you guys join us at 1111 and 919 at, uh, uh, what is it, 401, have, 401 Lewis Lane in Havre de Grace, Maryland. We're at the middle school uh, having a great time. Come on out. Join us, please. This is going to be our last momentum. So we, for you guys out there listening tonight, it's going to be our last momentum until August. We're out we're taking a summer break, if you will, but we'll be back the first Wednesday in August. You guys enjoy yourself. Be safe out there with your loved ones. Enjoy your 4th of July. God bless you. Talk to you soon.